Hello and welcome to our program, Where God Weeps, a program where we speak about the situation of the suffering church around the world. The Democratic Republic of Congo is Africa's third largest country in terms of size and second in the world in terms of its mineral resources. And yet, in the level of the UN Human Development Scale, it sits second to last. To tell us more about this contradiction, it's my great privilege to welcome Father Thomas Malal of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Father Thomas, thank you very much for being with us here today in our program. Thank you very much for inviting me to share with you something about uh, my country and my church. Father Thomas, third largest country in Africa, second largest in terms in the world, in terms of mineral resources, and yet second to last on the UN human development scale. Why this contradiction? How is it that such a rich country has such poverty? Yeah, it's a question only time for all of us, uh, uh, Congolese, uh, because it should be not like that. But the, uh, according to what I think, uh, it's because of, I will say, the, the poverty. But there is really lack of uh, how to, to manage with all uh, the richness we have and somehow also to be, uh, to get in the structures, international structures, I think uh, there is a lack of uh, also integrating everything in, in, uh, uh, in administrating all we have in our country. There are many things, uh, but essentially I will say now uh, we need more formation. We need more um, yeah, helping people how to, to deal with all the things. To administer, to, to govern, administer, yeah, in fact, to, to govern. Yeah, to govern. When we speak about poverty, what are we speaking about? Perhaps if you could just paint us a picture, what does an average family have to contend with when they're living a life in the Democratic Republic of Congo? Yeah, very recently I was there and uh, I can talk about the normal family I have, uh, I have seen. Usually they don't have uh, three males, as we can imagine. But mostly when you have uh, something in the morning, very simple, you will get another meal only in the evening if the father who is working or who is working yeah, uh, not uh, getting a salary if he can go in the center of the town to look for some means when he will come with some money and then you can, uh, you can get something to eat. Otherwise, uh, you are not sure that you will get your, your meal. This is the way most of the people are living. It's a rural in environment. I mean, mostly it's agriculture, no? Yeah. People are living from farming. Yeah. What, what products are you, what, what do you live from when you're farming? What do we know, what are the products you're producing? Most of all, especially in the region when, where I am, I am from, uh, it's corn or maize, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, if you are working uh, for, uh, just for your family, and if something um, happen, for example, with the conflicts in, uh, um, in our region, then people have to move uh, from one place to another, uh, to another one. And then there is no time to get to the, the harvest of what they, they have done. And so you don't know exactly how you can get your, your food. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the, the military, the, the, the conflicts, as you've mentioned a, a little bit later, but is it such at the moment that we would say there's 
uh, are the people confronting a famine? Is there is the hunger level so bad that that yes that we are talking about a famine at this point? Now, as you know, um, the the country is very large and it's a, v a big country, but uh, um, not everywhere uh, these conflicts, um, how to say, are active. Are active in some places. Uh, myself, where I am from, it's very quiet. Uh, it's very quiet, but uh, nearby. Uh, that conflicts really uh, disturb a lot the the way of living of of, of people. Uh, but in generally speaking, I will say, generally speaking, the situation is not very good for everyone. But even where there is um, uh, uh, peace, I will say, there are also a lot of people who uh, doesn't have anything and the others maybe few one with a lot of uh, of, of things and the, the way of living uh, is very different so there's a great disparity of yes, wealth yes yes i want to talk about this question of the conflicts because since 1996 more than 5 million congolese died uh, from the effects of a long regional war known, also known as Africa's World War. Yeah. Um, during the heart of this war between 1996 and 2003, militias destroyed schools, roads, parishes, and thousands fled. Can you give us a little bit, I know it's a, it's a very complicated situation, but can you give us a little bit of, of a picture as to what was this war? And what is the situation now? As you say, in some parts it's calm, in other parts there's still uh, conflict going on. Yeah, uh, I will talk more uh, where it was not so deep, uh, because I, myself I, I never live where it's very active. Um, talking about the structures, um, you know, during the during the war. Uh, many people can die, and uh, and also houses and structures, schools, etc., can be destroyed uh, because uh, uh, there is no choice, uh, uh, maybe. But uh, many things were destroyed, not only um, physically, but I will say also that many people or many lives was broken. And uh, for uh, the church, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm serving, um, for the moment we are trying, or the church is trying to, to restore what was broken, not only physically, let's say when we are talking about structures or infrastructures who were destroyed, uh, but also uh, people should be uh, uh, the church is trying to restore uh, lives uh, materially, but also uh, uh, deeply. In the person. Yes. Let's leave the, the infrastructure questions for a little bit, but to the people. Yeah. Um, what damages do you see in the hearts of the people when you say lives are broken? Yeah. And then what can you do to, to reconcile? Is there, is there still enmity between the, the people or the, or the groups? And how do you heal people who have suffered such um, a brutal war and for so long? I think what we do and, uh, is uh, just to stress uh, in the teaching, um, I want to talk about uh, formation, uh, that what is important uh, is to see in uh, another person uh, myself or the image of myself. But uh, from the side of the, of the church, that uh, everybody, uh, everyone is created to the image of God and uh, uh, to respect him as he is. But because of the bad experiences uh, in the past or during that time of crisis, we have seen a lot of things very uh, brutal and very, um, how to say, uh, destroying, let's say, bad, bad, bad experiences that somehow uh, I, I don't uh, believe too much in another, another person 
especially if he has in a, a whip, weapon, weapon uh, yes. weapons. So I have a fear of all that people because you never know when he can destroy your life, when uh, he can, he is there to, to keep or to, to take care of you. So that makes um, uh, that people still... They don't trust each other. Yes, yes. It's, it's very difficult because you never know. And um, I think what we can do and what we are, the, the church is doing more is to, to form, uh, to, to help people to understand uh, and to come to respect uh, each, each life or each person. Catholics of the population of 79 million, Catholics make up 50% of the population. How important is the role, how important is the place of the church in uh, Congolese society? I suppose especially when the government structures, because of the war, were not working. Yeah. The church is uh, really, or let's say the government is relying on the church because the church always uh, is there to, to help people where the government can't really do. As, uh, I will say, um, for example, the um, primary education. The good schools are under the responsibility, under the control of the church. Ourselves as a Salvatorian, we have many schools uh, in my country and we try, uh, we try to do our best and that people can get um, elementary um, a level of education. So in that way, I think we are trying to, to help people to, or to restore uh, this uh, what is very important in a hum human being. I think the Catholic Church is running 40% uh, of all the schools in, uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Is education for the Church one of the principal priorities? Because uh, I understand the majority of the population in the Democratic Republic of Congo is under 25. It's, it's a very young population with, of course, a lot of with poverty, then a lot of illiteracy and a lack of education. So would this be the principal focus of the church or would it be, for example, this question of reconciliation, of pastoral, or, or both? I will say both because um, uh, to talk about reconciliation uh, among people, people should be able to understand. And that's why uh, education really is a priority for, uh, for the church, for the mom. Because if you can educate um, a baby or a child, then you prepare him to understand better what uh, is about reconciliation and other things very important in the life of human being. Now, unfortunately, although this African war the, between 90, 1996 and 2003 is over, there are still parts of the country where the conflict is still ongoing. There are still three million people displaced, for example, from the east of Congo, who, because there are still military activities, militias who are active in that part. Can you tell us a little bit about this and what life is like for these people in, in this part of Congo? Yeah, uh, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult because uh, losing your, your house and leaving uh, your land, especially uh, for that people, how can you uh, start or how many times you will restart your life? So for them, there is no security uh, anymore because they don't know uh, where I am now, if I will stay, let's say, a year or two years, or I will go back in my, uh, my place. So uh, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. You can't do an, uh, anything because uh, you are not really um, sure what will happen tomorrow. Uh, in that part. That's why people are leaving uh, uh, their place to go where they think it could be uh, very safe for, uh, for them. So they can't do really anything. You can't cultivate to, to farm. It's very difficult. The Democratic Republic of Congo has one-third of the world's diamonds 
and 70% of the store of coltan. Coltan is a, a metal that is used in all of our electronic devices from mobile phones to computers. Has this wealth of this country, has it been a blessing or has it been a curse? Yes, could be a blessing, but unfortunately most of the time it's not a, a blessing. It's a source of, uh, I will say, that war, eh? that conflicts, and in the Congo it's very clear that uh, myself, I will prefer not having um, all that resources than to have it because it uh, uh, bring a lot of difficulties and a lot of uh, uh, trouble uh, than to help the people to be uh, better. The church during this period of conflict and still today, in particularly in the East where this conflict, uh, part of this conflict is still going on, has been a very strong supporter of the defense of human rights, has been standing up for, for the human person, uh, accepting refugees into the churches. Uh, the churches were often full at the height of the war with people seeking shelter. Of course, then the church in some way became a target. What is the situation of the church's structures that also suffered during the war and what are the needs for rebuilding, reconstruction and the rebuilding of the church in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo? As you, you, you have said, uh, the church, uh, because the church is uh, um, for the people and if people are suffering or uh, living in the situation of conflicts and war, that means automatically that the church also is involved in uh, that pro process of, of suffering. So uh, I know uh, that there were uh, religious uh, nuns and also priests who were killed as other people uh, or uh, at the same time uh, other people were also killed. Uh, infrastructures as uh, schools or churches were also destroyed. Uh, in the same way, the houses of people were also destroyed. So, um, although this situation, uh, all the time the church tries to, to restore, to rebuild, to uh, install all that all uh, the structures, but as you know, it's not uh, uh, very easy to do that. So there is the need. Still, a lot of work to yeah, be done. Yeah, yeah, to be done. The Catholic Church in the Democratic Republic of Congo, as in other African nations, um, in many ways lives from the support of the laity. And, the, and in many places, the laity have organized themselves into Christian communities, base communities, um, ecclesial communities, which meet regularly to share scripture, to pray, as well as to, to support each other. The, the ones who have greater needs, mm -hmm. um, food would be distributed. Um, how important are these base ecclesial communities? And, um, and what is the role of the laity in, in, in this, in this uh, spiritual development of the church in, in Congo? Yeah, it's very important in the development um, because, you know, um, in the past the church was, um, I will say, very far from, from the people. In organizing this uh, Christian community um, in, in the base, I will say that the gospel is uh, lived out really uh, where it should be, in the families, in this small, uh, in, uh, we, call, we call it the domestic church, so, and a small one. And in that, we know each other very well and what are uh, difficulties or, or challenges, etc. So it's better in uh, living in that small, uh, small communities than to be in a big and very large one where uh, maybe I will not be known by, the, by the, uh, the pastor of my parish, but in my community everybody knows me. And it's um, easy uh, to be, or, or the, the support, the support not only uh, uh, with uh, material but also 
uh, and this, um, at the spirit, spiritual level, it's it's better. And it's very important, really, to uh, to strengthen that structures because without that, we will be talking in uh, like in a desert. I will say because uh, Catholic. Uh, church uh, is the one with a lot of uh, um, uh, people, so it's better to strengthen it. That 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 small and that's what the, the domestic the yeah, domestic church the de domestic church. Yeah. The Democratic Republic of Congo, as we said, is the third largest country in Africa, and yet at the same time, the wars and all of the challenges, poverty, have meant that. A lot of the communication, the infrastructure has been destroyed, and so people travel mostly either on bicycle yeah. or on foot. Yeah. What challenges does this present for the average priest who is working in a rural environment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there is a lack uh, of uh, infrastructure, as uh, we have said, uh, because um, to encourage people to to. to uh, it, sh it should be done by visiting them. And as the structures were, uh, were destroyed and maybe they will not be restored because the government is uh, doing what they can but not really what uh, they should do, uh, yeah, we, the priests will rely on the few very limited means and really sometimes it's difficult because you can see or visit your um, <clears throat> a, a small village somewhere in the bush uh, yeah, after maybe uh, two months or sometimes three months. And uh, yeah, there is really a need and you have to use the means people are, are, are using. So uh, I think it's important and... Uh, it must be a great celebration when the priest does come in sure. the village. It must sure. be a great, a great... I mean, if you come only once or, uh, or twice every two or three months yeah. uh, for the people to see a priest, it must be a, a tremendous joy. Yes, a big celebration because um, what I've seen, when you arrive in a small village uh, like that, so the day you arrive is a Sunday, even if it's a Wednesday or so. That day will be a Sunday for so it's a big joy and a big celebration. Yeah. Here, I mean, now we're together in Rome and in Europe, we've become accustomed to a mass that perhaps lasts a half an hour or an hour and a Sunday. But in Africa, a mass can last upwards uh, of three hours. What is it that we have lost in our appreciation of, of the Mass that the African community still has. Uh, what is the, how do you see this difference uh, living in Rome and coming from Africa? Yeah, I, according to me, it's uh, um, the way of understanding or, or to face the, the time. Uh, most of the time we say, you as a European, you have the watch, and we Africans, we have the time. So, um, to celebrate something, we don't we don't care about uh, how long it will uh, it will last, but we just celebrate. When it will, fi it will finish, yeah, it will finish. So, but here, I see uh, that everything is well calculated, so you can't go. Uh, <laughs> Over the time uh, you you have received to celebrate something, so somehow yeah I I miss I'm missing something, but I I I accept mm. because I'm living in uh, in this situation. But I would like really to have yeah maybe with more songs and yeah more life yeah yeah. Father Thomas, we've talked about many, many challenges facing, I mean, many beautiful things, obviously, but also many challenges facing the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, what would you say are, um, what would you say are your greatest needs? Uh, the greatest will be, uh, for me, the support, uh, support of the, um, the structures. Uh, as we, we, we have said, uh, they are uh, schools, uh, 
and the churches destroyed and were destroyed during the, the, that crisis, that war, and they should be reconstructed on, or restored. So there is really uh, that need because to, to form people, to, to teach people, you need some places and uh, it should be really uh, built up and it's very important and also because the church is uh, doing um, a lot uh, in that maybe also to help uh, those who are teaching or are going to teach some means to reach people uh, far away in the bushes etc. Father Thomas Malal, thank you for having been with us today on our program. No, thank you also for inviting me in this conversation. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having been with us today in our program, Where God Weeps. And if you'd like to know more about the situation of Catholics in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or perhaps how you might be able to help, I would encourage you to look at the contact information at the end of this program. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.